50. He fends off very elegant and Dallas Ann. And a Dave goes back to back. The beast of Britain's done it. But nature straightened the TJ. And this is an annihilation. Today we farewell an Australian icon, the greatest of all time. Wings wins her third, Queen Elizabeth. Hello and welcome to the Good Oil Podcast, Season 1, Episode 5. I'm your host, Peter Thomas Fornital, back with you in the Brooklyn Bunker. All three participants on the show here at the same time. That's certainly a nice treat with the the world travel in the rearview mirror. And let's bring in the team now. He's returned from Australia. He's doing well. He's got some ideas. He's Andrew Brown. How are you, my friend? PTF, it is fantastic to be back with you live this week. Yeah, I had a great two weeks uh, down under. Uh, Day one of the championships this Friday night. It's the grand finals of Sydney racing, the Super Bowl, really. So I can't wait to get stuck in and find a few winners. We're also going to bring in our other uh, guest on this show. She's been doing an amazing job, absolutely crushing it with tips on this show with uh, fashion down in Texas. Jessica Paquette, how are you today? I am great, PTF. Great to be back. It's nice to see us all in one place, just not the same place. We'll have to remedy that at some point, it, eventually. A trip to Australia is the only logical answer. I think we'll I talk- see no other option. <laughs> <laughs> this show, of course, brought to you by our friends at Twin Spires and Sky Racing World. And they've got this great promotion. We've been talking about it every week. This hit and split $15,000 promo, $2,500 available each and every week. Very simple. Go to twinspires.com, opt in at their offers page, and you get an opportunity to win your share. The first $10 on win bets throughout the card is what counts towards the leaderboard. It's been very popular. Check it out at twinspires.com. We're here to talk about four races this week. We're going to start off with the group one, Don Pastor, the Donny. Andrew, let's start off with you on this one. Well, this is one of my favorite races, PTF, not just on the Australian racing calendar, but the international racing calendar, the best milers doing their best around the famous Randwick circuit. Three-year-old horses traditionally have a pretty good record in this race, which is one of the reasons why I've gone all the way down the bottom and landed on number 20, Converge, trained by Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott. Gay Waterhouse has actually won this race seven times previously. Of course, Converge was the impressive winner of the Randwick Guineas, two starts back over the same mile distance. He was no match for Animo last time out, but I think going back from the mile and a quarter to the mile is a huge plus, as is the lightweight, only carrying 49 and a half kilograms, got a nice low draw, and the heavy track won't be a concern, already proven on the heavy nine in that Randwick Guineas win. Forbidden Love is airborne. I like her in for second. And I also have liked Private Eyes who runs this campaign. He's just going to need luck from the wide draw. But it's number 20 converge for me on top in the Donny. Jessica, let's bring you in for your thought on the Donny. I also like Converge quite a bit, but for me, maybe I'm a little bit of a homer, but Lighthouse, uh, all roads lead to Lighthouse for me. Uh, there were some great photos posted by her connections of her hacking out on the beach uh, a couple of weeks ago. I think it was prior to winning her last race. Happy horses make good race horses. I will die on this hill. And seeing how they uh, they manage them in Australia, this is a horse who's getting better and better. She's getting more and more confident. And I loved her last race. She defeated a great field also. Hinged, ran great in the Vinery Stud. Promise of success came back to win the Emancipation Stakes. That was a gr- group too. But still, she's not running against any slouches that she, uh, I, don't, I think she'll really hold her own here. Next up, we're going to talk about another group one. It's the TJ Smith. And Jessica, we'll keep it with you. This is a solid field. Uh, hard knocking older horses. I went with Eduardo here. He and Nature Strip are renewing their rivalry. He's going for his third straight win. It's worth noting he won, won an open trial at Warwick since the challenge stakes. You have to think that tightened the wheels a little bit. Sometimes these older horses take some races really to get into their peak form. I wonder if he's sitting on a very big race. Andrew, let's bring you in for your thought on the TJ Smith. Well, yeah, the grand final for the sprinters uh, in the autumn. The big storyline, Shelby 66. This is his ninth race in three months where he's gone from running near last in a race barely better than a maiden to winning a group one. Now, he's had a two-week break, so people are saying that he's fresh off the layoff uh, for (laughs) this particular race, his 10th race in three months. Am I going to tip it? No, but I do have him underneath. Um, Let's talk about those two superstars in this race, Eduardo and Nature Strip. 
Nature Strip, and they've met nine times. Nature Strip leads five to four, but over six furlongs, Nature Strip holds a three nil advantage. So I'm with Nature Strip to defend his title. He won this race last year and the year before. So this will be three in a row for the champ. I've got Eduardo in for second and Shelby 66 for third. Moving on to the grade one Australian Derby. Don't say Derby, they tell me. Don't say Derby. It's the Australian Derby, of course. Andrew, I really want to hear who you think is going to take down this year's renewal. Well, the Tullock is generally a really good lead up uh, for the Derby. And it was run on Monday, uh, just five days ago, because it was postponed from Rose Hill when they copped a lot of rain last Saturday night. Um, so only a five day backup for a lot of these horses, but I think that's a real positive for the New Zealand runner, number five, Regal Lion, who is hitting the wire really strongly over nine furlongs and will eat up every yard of the mile and a half. His trainer, Murray Baker, has won this race before and he's set to retire shortly, so it'd be a nice send off for him. Number 15, Benno, uh, incidentally named after the late Richie Benno, who was a legendary Australian cricketer and commentator. Uh, he was in that same race, the Tullock, and was working into the finish really nicely just on the outside of Regal Line for third. And Hitotsu, absolute star and must be respected. But uh, yeah, it's the, the Kiwi horse Regal Line for me on top in the derby. Jessica, I want to hear your idea of the winner of this one. I think Hitatsu looks awfully tough here, really deserves a lot of respect and kind of internationally, we're just seeing Japanese influence making a big impact wherever they go. I am trying to be a little bit clever. I like character. I thought he defeated a good field, including Regal Lion last time out. And I just like the way he finished. He looked like he had a lot left in the tank. This is a big class test, but he may offer a little value. Bonus coverage, an extra race on this week's show. It's the ATC Australian Turf Club Sires Produce Stakes. Jessica, who's your idea of the winner? I'm going to eat a little shock here. I think Fireburn is a star on the rise. She has been untested, has won her last four races. Uh, beat, you, beat her if you can. Andrew, how about you? Who do you think is going to win the Sires? I'm looking for a little bit of value. Number 10, Show Court from the barn of Chris Waller. Only had the two starts, was excellent on debut, then had zero luck in the Todman uh, last time out. It's had a trial since, won pretty impressively in that trial, and the seven furlongs really looks up his alley. Um, my only concern with Fireburn, who was a dominant winner of the Golden Slipper, was just that there's zero pace in this race, but no denying that she is the one to beat. And I've got a soft spot for number two, Charlatan, who got around at around about the 20 to 30 to one mark. So he's my roughy in the race. Roughy, we'll get to that in a minute, but another little feature we want to get to here first, Jessica, as our resident American expert, give us this week's American Angle. It's kind of the same as it's been. Uh, Lighthouse is such a star. She has been so fun to watch as she's trended upwards. She's a, she's a rising star in Australia. She is owned by Jamie Roth, Ellen J. Foxwood, some familiar silks to American audiences. She, she's by Miz and Mast. This is a Philly. The best is still to come. I think we'll see a lot from her as she continues to develop. Now, you use this term roughy before, Andrew. You gave us some context for this one, but uh, give us the real definition of what this term means in this week's How to Speak Australian segment. Well, Australians really love to add a Y or an IE to the end of pretty much any word that they can. Uh, my last name, Brown, of course, becomes Brownie. Um, so roughy is actually uh, the um, slang for rough. And when we speak of a uh, horse that's rough in the market, it's long odds in the market. So if you ask someone for their roughy or if someone's giving you their roughy in a race, it's effectively their live long shot. I love it. Like, similar to long, long shot bomb, whatever you want to, whatever you want to say, every jurisdiction has theirs. Roughy is a good version of that though. We'll, we'll have to start incorporating that on our USA shows just to see the, the looks on, uh, on listeners faces, but not that we get this, you know what I mean. Before we get out of here, got to remind folks one more time that we've got this great offer from our friends at twinspires.com and sky racing world, go to twinspires, go to the offers tab and opt in for your chance to win your share of the $15,000 being put up at no cost to players. All you have to do is pick one horse in each race. The first 10 that you bet will count towards the leaderboard. Great opportunity to make a little bit of extra money and for contest players to get a look at the great international fair that you can bet over at twinspires.com. Andrew Brown, we'll thank you one more time. Jessica Paquette, we'll thank you as well. We'll see if we can keep the winners coming and rocking and rolling on this show. We will be back next week. That's it for now. I'm Peter Thomas Fornital for Twinspires.com.